Saturday Night Live made light of the policy challenges ahead for the new Trump administration, but in all seriousness, whether the president-elect will stick with his campaign promises, and if so, can they be enacted, are big questions. So we've assembled a panel of experts who have mostly conservative leanings to help us understand just how enormous some of those challenges are. Lonnie Chen served as policy director for Mitt Romney's presidential campaign. He is also a CNN political commentator and a fellow at the Hoover Institution at Stanford University. Grover Norquist is president of the conservative group Americans for Tax Reform. Maya McGinnis is president of the nonpartisan committee for a responsible federal budget. And David Frum is a senior editor at The Atlantic and a former speechwriter for George W. Bush. David, I want to start with you on this question of um, conflicts, potential conflicts, yeah. relationship between Donald Trump, the president, and, and the Trump businesses. What do you make of their initial responses about how that will be handled? Not good. I, I think the first order of business, the very first order of business for Republicans who want to ensure a successful administration is to corruption proof the administration. It's going to be a big problem. And the surest way to do that is to pass a law formalizing the long tradition that the president must publish his tax returns. Um, it may or may not be possible. The president may or may not be willing to divest himself. But the way for the public to be protected is for people to know what the president has, whether he receives any benefit. Because of the particular nature of Donald Trump's businesses, everything that happens at the Trump Organization flows into his tax return. So if we can see the tax return, we can know, is anyone trying to bribe him? Has anyone succeeded? Grover, the Donald Trump campaigned on Trump. he campaigned on getting rid of the self-dealing in Washington. Uh, it was not a small issue. So when Mike Pence was kind of vague, he said, "Trust me, it'll all get worked out." Uh, wouldn't you expect kind of brighter lines from a candidate who spent so much time talking about changing Washington? Yeah, and look, you want to change all of Washington. The focus on Trump is is interesting, uh, but there's a House, there's a Senate, there are governors, there's an entire bureaucracy. We need to reduce the amount of money the federal government spends. If you don't want people stealing some of it, the best way to do that is to have less of it spent. Uh, very important that the Republicans maintain their ban on earmarks. That Earmarks have been the currency of corruption in Washington, D.C. for years and years and years. The Republicans ended that. Some people want to bring it back. We should make sure, one, we stop that, and two, instead of having money for roads come to Washington, D.C., where we then send it back out with a series of regulations and uh, strings on it, including the Davis-Bacon Act, which is a racist act passed in the 1930s to keep African Americans from competing in those jobs, it should be repealed simply because it's racist. But it also raises the cost of building anything in the United States that the federal government touches by 25 to 33 percent. We should, one, get rid of the Davis-Bacon Act. West Virginia just got rid of their version of the Davis-Bacon Act. Wisconsin did. A yeah. number of states have abolished that. We should at the federal level. And we should let ro states raise their own money and build their own roads. You bring trillions in the United, into Washington, D.C. to spend, Lonnie, we'll corrupt things. Lonnie, Grover just had a nice detailed list there of things that need to be done. Uh, so that's one area. But, but still, back to the president, uh, who is uh, no small actor in politics in Washington. What could he do? What, what other than what David suggested, which is publishing those tax returns, what else might you expect from a president who ran uh, so forcefully on the idea of changing the way Washington works in terms of his own relationships? Well, I think certainly he should hold himself to a higher standard. And if there are concerns particularly about what's happening within the dealings in his family business, uh, think about ways to put up more vigorous firewalls, frankly, between what his family is doing with the business and what he might be doing with the people's business as president. So I think it's important for him to think about that. I think this issue of lobbyists also is important. I think that the administration or the, the president-elect's administration kind of turning around and saying, look, we are going to make a serious effort to ensure that there isn't the kind of revolving door that we may have seen in previous administrations. By putting in place, for example, this five-year ban, I think that's a great idea. Remember, the essence of the Trump campaign candidacy is as the outsider. And it's crucially important for his credibility, but also the credibility of Republicans who were elected with him, for him to behave in a way uh, that is completely above reproach. All right, let me ask you now, switching and going back to Grover's point a little bit, the budget. So we have promises that were made on the campaign trail, and then we have the reality of the budget. Where should people trying to figure out where the rubber meets the road, what should they look to? Right. So first, for starters, uh, President-elect Trump is going to be inheriting the worst fiscal situation of any president as judged by the debt relative to the economy mm -hmm. other than President Truman when he's walking into office. So he's got a tough starting point. He spent a lot of time on the campaign talking about the importance of getting that trillion, $20 trillion debt back down. 
Um, and yet, we looked at the proposals that he put forth during the campaign. They would, in fact, add over $5 trillion to the national debt. And that's on top of borrowing $9 trillion that we are poised to do if we do nothing. So he has a huge uh, challenge ahead of him. He's also going to be working with the Republican Congress that for years has said it's very important to balance the budget over a 10-year period. The question is, now that they have the House, the Senate, and the White House, are they suddenly going to pull back from those fiscal goals because he has these unpaid for tax cuts, infrastructure spending, increases in defense, a lot of things that would actually balloon the debt, or are they going to hold to those fiscal goals, which are very important for both getting the debt under control and actually helping to grow the economy, which is the other major. And I think the flip side of that also is Donald Trump during the campaign did not say very much about Medicare or Social Security. Mm -hmm. Now remember, the three biggest drivers of federal deficit and debt going forward are health care spending, Social Security, and net interest on the debt. So unless we do something about those quickly, this is a, a problem like compounding interest is a good thing when you invest. This is the opposite of that. Yeah. And so it is crucially important, and I'm glad to see, by the way, that Republicans have begun to focus on Medicare reform, mm -hmm. because that is the, the more intractable, I think, of the two problems between Medicare and Social Security. But it's also important for him, I think, to to revisit what he said during the campaign, which is that he didn't want to touch Social Security. Right. I think it's important that we look at things like the retirement Let's age and, and also